Hi guys and welcome back to another painting. Today I'm working on my May Patreon exclusive postcards. So if you want to own this piece as a print, the only way to do that is by pledging to my $10 tier over on my Patreon and you have today or tomorrow to sign up. And I will have a link down in the description that'll take you over there, but let's just go ahead and jump right into this piece and talking about it. So this one, I had a few things that I wanted to try doing differently. So I wanted a pretty straightforward composition and subject matter. I wanted to be able to focus on the details and the execution in a way that I could get more different things out of it and enjoy that process. So the first thing that I tried to focus on was the shape of her hair. I love creating pieces like this where I have the hair framing the subject and filling in all these negative spaces around them and creating a very compositional device where it guides the eye from one to the next with the shape of the hair and the line work within it. It is really actually kind of therapeutic to work on it and relaxing. So I love painting hair like that. But at this point I have almost a formula on how I attack the way that I draw the hair like that. I know which lines connect where to create what type of a shape that I'm looking for. And Ultimately, I wanted this one to be different. I wanted to be able to run into points where I'd have to think how I wanted to execute it. And maybe looking at it from an outsider's view, it doesn't look that different from that type of piece that I've done. But executing it, it, it did feel like a breath of fresh air. It was a little bit different. Um, there were a few things that I was focusing on. So the first one, which I do not think that I succeeded in, but I wanted her hair texture to look more curly, like a tight curl in some areas and then a looser hair curl in others and more of this wave. But I don't think it was really captured in the way that I ended up drawing it. I was looking at a lot of references when I was working on this, but it just didn't come through. It's kind of tricky when I'm drawing it in the way that I am, where I'm not quite focusing on the shape that the hair would be making and I'm more forcing it into a different type of shape. So that was one thing that I would really like to be able to figure out how to do better. I would love to be able to have more hair textures in my arsenal when it comes to drawing. But one thing that I was happy with as far as the execution of the hair is I was able to play with the shapes and the lines that I use to create it more than I typically do. There was one particular shape type device that I used in her hair that I actually really enjoyed and it was fun to paint in there. But uh, one good example of where you can find it is the hair where it overlaps her cheek. There's almost this like thorn or a, a nub in her hair where it flips back and has that shape to it. And I incorporated that in several different places in her hair. And I let that be the cornerstone of some of the shapes that defined other line work around it. And that was something that kicked it out of being a little bit more repetitious as far as how I normally do hair. And it allowed me to think of this in a little bit more of an abstract way. It, it put in these new shapes that aren't really found in hair. So it helped me to remove the way that I normally think about it and to think more how I wanted the lines to look and the shape of the hair to look. And the next thing that I tried to take more of a fresh take on is the color palette. So it's probably pretty obvious, but I tend to really gravitate towards analogous color palettes. I know I brought that up before, but I would really like to be able to be more creative with the way that I handle colors. I just really love the look of analogous, analogous color schemes because they look so harmonious and one thing blends into the next and it's just so comfortable to make everything look like they belong. But I think that I'm kind of stagnating there. I'm not pushing myself out of that and I'm not being more creative with the color with the different combination of colors that I'm bringing together. So that was one thing that this piece, I wanted to push myself. And in the end I did, I can definitely say without a doubt that I've never created a painting with this particular color palette and the way that it ended up. So it is completely unique within my body of work, which is what I wanted. And that was really exciting and good. And working on her blue skin was one of my favorite things to paint. I loved being able to layer certain colors on top of it. One of my absolute all time colors of ever is an M. Graham Quinacridone Violet. 
And that one looks so beautiful on top of the blue that I chose. And that's one of my favorite things about watercolors is that because they're transparent, they create such a completely different look when they're put on top of another one. It's like experimenting where different colors that I lay on top of other colors, they they make new effects and new colors. And I love that. I love being able to find new combinations that create different looks so that I can reuse that kind of a look in a different type of situation. But this is maybe one of my favorite color palettes. I loved how it brought life into her very cold skin. So it looks like she has warmth to it without it being a warm color palette. But I did find that the blue that I was using was picking up a little bit. So it was not quite getting as flat of a wash as I wanted. So each layer that I did, it was almost muddling it a little bit. And one great technique for being able to cover up something like that is to actually just add more texture to the skin. And I did that with a very subtle textury bristly brush. And I basically just took that same color that was the base of her skin. And I just dappled it on some of the areas that had more of that uneven look to it and that just made it look more cohesive and it covered that up so overall it looks much more even. I also went in with a brush and added some freckles and dots over her whole face and that is a great way to distract from it. If you put it in certain areas it can really build up so that the unevenness of the skin ends up looking much more skin-like and it all adds to that final look and the texture. But I think the hair is where it got a little bit crazy. So I did have a color swatch that I was working off of from the very beginning where basically I had her skin color and her hair color and her skin color was that royal blue and her hair color ended up being this yellowy green, which was lighter than her skin. I wanted to create a strong contrast in the values, especially around her hand. That way it would have more of a dynamic silhouette and that would pop off more. And it looked great in the little color samples. And I actually still like the final result quite a bit actually, but it's still pretty jarring. And it's kind of hard to get used to because I'm so used to the colors that I use just blending in and looking like they all fit. So looking at this color palette, it's just really bold and striking. And it's interesting when you do something different in your own work, it can be really hard to get used to looking at it and seeing it objectively and figuring out if it's something good, if it's something that you like. And sometimes you just need to sit on a piece and look at it later. And then you can decide if that thing was a good idea or a bad idea or something that you want to try more of. And I think this one is kind of one of those where I think it's on the fence, but I, I loved the process of painting it and I love that it's different and that I have never done this kind of color palette before, but her green hair in the end, I did have to do a couple layers to bring it back into a little bit more of a realm that looked correct. So from the beginning, there were strands of her hair that were, still really yellow and it just looked a little bit less harmonious than I would like with her skin. So in the end, I ended up going with a very pale blue wash over all of her hair and it brought down the saturation a bit and it also harmonized all of the hair so that there weren't some strands that were much more yellow and some that were a lot more of a cool blue. They all just ended up being a little bit more of a cool green. And looking at her again, I do, I do think I really like it. I like that she looks almost otherworldly and I do really want to get into doing more sci-fi and alien creatures and alien girls. So for her, she does feel a lot more like she's filling that role and that kind of a genre that I would really love to get into more of. So I like her and I like that she's different and I did love going in with my white gel pen. I might've been a little, a little overboard on using it, but but no, I don't think so. I think that it adds to it. I love the white strands in her hair. It seems to take some of the more negative things that I felt about her hair and twist them around. And then I liked it a lot more once I added those white highlights and loose hairs that were white. 
And that is officially it for today. If you want to own the original painting, I do have a link down in the description that will take you to my art shop so you can own this painting. And if you'd like to own prints of her, I do have a link to my Patreon down there as well. And I have links to all the tools that I use to create this. So if you want to check out what I used and maybe check out some quinacridone violet because it's amazing, that is all down below. But that's it for today. I will be back on Saturday with another video. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you then.